RCAM is a very easy to use tool, but even so I thought it'd be helpful to make a tutorial video that covers some of the odds and ends regarding its workflow. So in the promo video, I demonstrated this, where the camera is flying from target to target and its, its rotation and position is being affected by the position of these numbers. It's, it's happening relative to these numbers. Okay, so if I, if I move this to like over here and I rotate it, okay, it doesn't matter. It's just gonna happen relative to these items. And I thought it'd be useful to show you how to set that up. So, of course, I, I highly recommend setting up our cam so that it is a keyboard shortcut. So if you go into your edit menu and go to edit keyboard shortcuts, you can hit shift C in this column here to pull up the default hotkey for select camera. So we can type RR cam up here and you can replace it uh, to, to get that functionality into that hotkey. You can put RR cam into your side menus, but I, I don't recommend using it that way. Uh, it, it'll just be slower and clumsier to use if you, if you put it there. Anyways, uh, let's, let's get this set up. So if I hit shift key, shift C with any camera selected, I get this set up, okay? And as you know, we can press the up and down arrow keys to cycle through the various options that our cam has. Something I want you to notice is that uh, every option has a tool function. Uh, what I mean by tool function is that when you hit shift C while this item is selected, it will reselect the camera. So if I hit shift C, lo and behold, the camera is selected. All right, so there's that. Uh, let's go ahead and select uh, some targets. So with the uh, option six selected, we'll hit shift C to get into assigned target mode, which is denoted by this big box in, in here. And I'll select any number and hit shift C again. And this pointer appears. That, that tells you that the uh, target has been created and we can select other targets in the exact same manner. All right, so we have four targets. So let's see the effect of this. So if we hit Shift-C again while this marker is selected, it'll exit this mode and make all the, the uh, pointers disappear. And now we can go into the cycle rotation and position uh, position controllers and move these around okay and this denotes where the camera is going to be positioned or rotated uh, when the fall off controllers are used so if i want to position the camera uh, over here by the one and i want it to rotate to the four all right now we can go into the fall off rotation and position and do it just like that okay so there we go so this is the position marker and this is the rotation marker but currently we have a problem with this setup now uh, let me turn these fall offs uh, back to their off position all right and uh, we'll set the cycles back to where they were originally now the problem is we only have four targets okay but technically, in order to position and rotate the camera, we need eight targets. So how do we how do we make something out of nothing? Well, we need nulls. Uh, I'm going to make four nulls here. So one, two, three, and four. I'm going to make make sure parent in place is off. Go into the scene editor, and I'm going to make these nulls children of each one of these numbers. Okay, so uh, one, two, three, and four. Alternatively, you could have an add null as child script. Uh, that would make things a little bit faster. Uh, but anyhow, we can then move these nulls away from their parents. All right, and these nulls can be assigned as targets. So. We can go back into uh, assign uh, assign a target, and I'll hit Shift C again, and we're gonna make we're gonna make four more targets. So I'm gonna make 
these four nulls uh, the the next four targets. So one, two, three, and four. So with that set up, we are now free to uh, have a setup where we can go. Okay, I want I want it. I want the camera to rotate here at to this one, but I want it to be positioned at uh, over by this null. Okay. Now this is target number five, as denoted by the. Uh, the uh, bottom in the bottom left corner, you can see that um, there are actually six targets. Um, that's because the spline uh, defaults to target number one. All right, and these go in increments of a hundred. So if I set the bank to one hundred, it's going to go back to the spline, the invisible spline. Okay. Uh, so if I set it to two hundred, it's going to go to one. If I set it to three hundred. It's going to go to number two, okay. But let's let's set it back to six hundred. All right. So now, when I set the falloffs here, it's going to be it's going to be pointed at this number one because the the rotation marker is here. But the falloff of position is going to position it at the null. So, no matter how I rotate and position this this uh, number one it's going to move the camera so that it's it's positioned at the null and pointed at the one all right and uh, in this way we can uh, we can start keyframing the changes that we want to make in this camera all right so so let's let's animate the uh, the cycles the the cycle nulls so that they cycle through the uh, two, three, and four. All right. So uh, I'm going to go to keyframe 10, and uh, let's do keyframe 15. So uh, we're going to have this uh, point at the two, and I will set the fall off. Uh, I will set the cycle for position to this null. Okay, and let's say that at frame 30, I want the number three to be the one that's being pointed at. So this should give you a pretty good idea as to how this uh, this can be set up. So let's do one more here. Now let's look at the animation. So now we have it's going one, two, three, and four. Okay, it's not perfect, but uh, you get the idea. So here, here's the really cool part. Now, no matter how I move these numbers, okay, I could move this over here, I could move this over here, and uh, you know, I I can just shuffle these around. So now, number two, number three, and number four, okay. So again, it, do, it doesn't matter how these are being moved around or shuffled around. Uh, the camera is going to move relative to all of these positions now. When using RCAM to constrain the camera's position and rotation in this fashion, eventually you're going to run into a problem. What if you want to add another target to the mix after you've already set everything up? Well, the, the answer isn't quite obvious because if I attempt to add this five and its child null, and I want to move the camera to this this position, well, let's see what happens. It's going to go to the five and then to this null because this is target number nine and this is target number ten. In order to add another target to a setup that is already complete like this you have to add it in a certain order because the way things work is all linear in in the so you have target one two three and four and then this is target number five six seven and eight so in order for this to actually work this has to be target number five not this null so how can we make that work 
Well, uh, going back into the sign target mode, I'll hit the down arrow key and remove all of the targets that were made. We're getting rid of only the targets when doing this. We're not deleting any keyframes or anything like that. So the animation is still intact. So uh, knowing this, I can then select the numbers again and hit Shift C to make new targets in this new order. So the first five targets are the first five objects and the next five targets are these nulls. Now let's see what happens to the camera when, when doing this change. Now we'll see that the camera zooms across to, to be positioned at this null. This is actually the correct behavior because this null used to be target number five, but now this object is target number five. So that's why the camera starts out there. So a way we can fix this, this uh, off by one error is to use a function that I've included for your convenience. So I'll go back into assign target mode and hit shift C. And this time I'm gonna hit down, the down arrow twice. And we'll see that I've included uh, some various functions that shift keyframes up or down for position or rotation cycle controllers. So if I shift the position target keyframes up, if I hit shift C with, with this option selected, the camera is going to be all of the camera's keyframes for the cycle position are going to be shifted by 100 degrees. So it, it's like I went, let me, let me show you how this affected the camera's keyframes. So if I go into cycle position, we will see that it starts out at 700 or target number six. So if I go back into assign target, assign target mode, and I shift keyframes back down, and then I'll select this and exit the mode by hitting shift C, we'll see that the all of the cycle position keyframes have been shifted down by 100 degrees or one target, okay? So you have a bulk management capability in, in this plugin by, by just hitting the down arrow keys and, and going to shift the keyframes as needed. Okay, so I can make this camera's keyframes shift however I want. So kind of a nice little handy feature there. So I'll select this again and make this go away. And now the camera is operating just the way that we want it to. Okay, so uh, I'll go ahead and make fix the rotation cycle keyframes so that it'll point at this number five. And there we go. The last bit of advice I have for you concerns using RCAM with splines. Now, by default, splines the, the spline setup is the very first target the camera has. And this does not need to be set up explicitly. Uh, the camera has access to this null controller, which constrains it on its position and rotation as needed. However, what if the spline needs to be transitioned into uh, when it's not the first target? We want the camera to uh, attach itself to this spline controller and move along this motion path like so. Well, uh, let me go through the, the steps because it's, it's not entirely obvious as to how to do it without problems. So I'll go ahead and assign, assign this null controller with, uh, as the next target. And I will set the cycle rotation and position so that it is set to use this spline controller. Now, we, we saw that the cycle rotation has to go through all of these nulls before it can get to the, spl to the uh, spline controller. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that the camera's rotation is acting really weird because 
the camera is trying to point at itself. Uh, it, it's trying to point itself into the position that it's currently in, and it just doesn't work that way. So what we, what we can do about that, th that specific problem is to create a new null, and we're going to make it a child of this spline controller. So make it a child of the spline controller and move it out. And we'll assign a new target and make it this, this null. So that now we can set the cycle rotation to use this null and that fixes the, uh, the conflict of position and rotation. The other problem, of course, is the fact that the camera has to cycle through all of these nulls in order to get to the spline controller. That's, that's a big problem. This is one of those cases where you kind of need to do some hand keying in order to complete the transition. So a way to do that is to set the falloff rotation to temporarily to 0%. So I'm going to set it to 0% at uh, about this point. Okay. Uh, when, when the falloff rotation is set to 0%, you have manual control over the camera's rotation. Okay, so I'm going to rotate the camera so that it's pretty similar in orientation to this spline controller. So we'll put it, put it like right about here. Okay, so now the falloff rotation can be dialed back on when the yellow rotation controller is in place. So I'll go ahead and keyframe this gradually into place so that it's not super obvious that I hand keyed a little part of that. So now what we're left with is a setup where the camera is cycling through these numbers and then it's, it transitions into the spline setup. All right, that wraps it up. Now, if you have any questions or, or bug reports or anything of that sort, feel free to contact me at ryanroy at gmail.com.